Oh, Barbara Manatee, you're still the one for me. The number two silly song of our first ten years, Endangered Love. We join Lanny as he follows the tragic saga of Barbara Manatee in the daytime drama, Endangered Love. Barbara Manatee, you are the one for me. things for the good of all and you can't come because you don't speak French. Au revoir. But if you need me, who will take me to the ball? Who's going to take me to the ball, Bill? I have a new dress and shoes, a new manatee lipstick. Who will take me to the ball? I'll take you to the ball, Barbara Manatee. Please don't go. I must. Don't go. I must. Don't Barbara Manatee, you are the one for me. Sent from up above, you are the one I love. should read a book. Yeah. Okay. This has been Silly Songs with Lamb. Tune in next time to hear Bill say, Barbara, I've learned to dance. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. There once was a boy who lived in a house, and the house sat under a tree. By the tree ran a fence that stretched far and wide around the gated community. Can I have my ball? Can you get my ball? I kicked it into the tree. And my ball bounced up. And my ball dropped in to the gated community. Oh, the gated community is where we like to be. Everything's so lovely, your oh, hearts are filled with glee. And when you come to visit, you can stand outside and see what a lovely bunch we are in our gated unity. Um, can I have my ball? Can you get my ball? I kicked it into the tree. And my ball bounced up. And my ball dropped in. To the gated community. Oh, the gated community is where we like to be. Our clothes are never dirty and our lawns are always green. And when you come to visit, you can stand outside and see what a tiny bunch we are in our gated unity. The gated community, we think you will agree, is pleasantly devoid of unsightly stranded free. Free, free of debris. Oh, gated. Gated. 
and welcome to VeggieTales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. Yep. Well, I think you're really gonna like this show. We got a letter from Caleb Whittier in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Bob? Yeah? How come you always get the letter? What? Why is it that you always read the letter? I mean, what if somebody wrote a letter to me? Well, I guess if you got a letter, you could read it. But this letter says... D Great! Well, kids, this week, we got a letter from Elijah Castillo in San Antonio, Texas. And Eli writes, uh, can I call you Eli? Thanks. Eli writes, Dear Larry. Oh, wait a minute, Larry. I don't mean to be rude, but Caleb here has a problem. And I was all prepared to do a story to have... Well, little Eli has a question, too. And it's just as important as Caleb's. Fine, Larry. What is Elijah's question? And it better be a good one, because I have a story already. Oh, it is. You see, Eli says here that there's a bully in his school and... A bully? Yeah, you know, a kid that's real mean to all the other kids. I know what a bully is, Larry. Then why'd you ask? Well, it's just that Caleb wrote about the same thing. Wow, that's one busy bully. Well, it's not the same bully. How do you know? Oh, well, I don't, but... Uh... But you seem so certain. Well, I am certain. How do you know? Well, Larry, it's just highly improbable, statistically speaking, that one bully is bothering two kids 500 miles apart. I mean, sometimes being certain of something just means highly probable. Highly probable! Bob, instead of talking about this, wouldn't it be a better idea to answer the question? You're right, Larry. I mean, being bullied is a big problem. You're right, Larry. I think we should show the kids what God says to do about bullies, don't you? Well, that's what I... Oh, man. Roll film! I swing from the trees with the greatest of ease I'm dashing and debonair For this is Sherwood and I'm Robin Hood With my bow and my trusty arrow We bring all the poor some food and much more We get it all for free Playground. Nobody owns oh. Hey! If I say this is my playground, then it is my playground. Sure, sure, this is your playground. <laughs> oh, is little Junior scared? Well, you should be. From now on, no one is allowed to play here unless I say so. You got it? Sure, I've got it. And that goes for all of you. If I catch any one of you even stepping foot in here, you'll get what Junior here got. And worse. Get it? So get out of here before I pound on all of his. Have you ever been pounded? A cousin of mine was. He's soup now. <laughs> bye bye, Junior. <laughs> hey. 
Hey, we're all heading to Laura's house to play. You want to come? No, thanks. Her mom's making cookies. No. Don't worry about it, Junior. He's just a big old bully. I know. You want me to tell your mom or dad? No, I'm fine. There's nothing to tell. You could tell Gordon he doesn't own the playground. That's what I'd tell him. If I were bigger. Where's Junior? When I'm on Star Player, we haven't got a player. He's here! Get that man a helmet! Junior, we're down 200 to zero with only two minutes to play. Where were you? There were lives to be saved, Coach. Well, what can he do in just two minutes? Just watch him. Just get me the ball. Three. One. John. Four. Eighteen. Hike. What's up? I wanted to make sure you were all right. Yeah, sure. Why wouldn't I be? Well, Gordon's awfully big. Aw, he doesn't scare me. He doesn't? What's the worst he can do? Sit on me? He already did that, and I barely felt it. Then do you think we could go back to the playground someday? I'd go back today if you guys wanted to. He's probably gone by now anyway. You'd... you'd face up to Gordon? Like I said, he doesn't scare me. That's fantastic! I'll go tell everybody. I'm toast. You are toast. Not yet, I'm not. You are more bread found on the diagonal that is subsequently spread with butter or jam. We'll see about that. The variety of toast selections are. Wheat, white, sourdough. Now the question is, where am I? Welcome to the planet Sandboxian. Population, one big bully. Leave now, or you're toast. Space Command, this is Junior Spaceman. I have landed on the designated planet and will now seek out the dreaded bully monster. Uh, roger that, Junior Spaceman. Be careful. We've already lost several good men on this mission. Will do. Over and out. Yep, he's toast. Sandbox. 
So, who did Junior Spaceman vanquish today? Mount Gordon, a big old bully on a playground far, far away. Far, far away, huh? Yeah. When you were a kid, were you ever afraid? Oh, you bet. I wasn't always the strapping specimen that I am today. Dad. I remember there was one guy in my class who always picked on me. What did you do? Oh, I tried ignoring him, hiding from him, hoping he would go away. But he just kept picking on me until finally I faced up to him. You did? What happened? Oh, he pounded me. But after that, I was never bothered again because he knew I wasn't afraid of him. Junior, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of courage. So if I were Junior's spaceman, I'd stand up for myself. But what if he pounds me? Ah, uh, him. Well then, you turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek? Sometimes a spaceman's just got to do what a spaceman's got to do. And remember, son, God's rules don't just work down here. They also work on playgrounds far, far away. Laura says you're going to go back to the playground. Well, I... Are you crazy? He'll squish you like a pea. What do you want to be, soup? Well, are we going or what? <laughs> He's probably not even at the playground anymore. Come on. Hey, he's not here. See? What did I tell you? Hey! hey! Hooray! 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 Why, if it isn't Junior and his peewee friends. <laughs> what did you do? Come back for a second helping of pounding? <laughs> God gives me courage, <laughs> not fear. Gordon! <clears throat> Gordon? No one owns this playground. It's big enough for all of us to share. You tell him, Junior! Hey, when I'm done pounding him, I'm coming after you. You're not helping. So, little boy, who's going to make me share my playground? Um, I can't make you do anything. If you're gonna pound me, go ahead. But what's it gonna prove? That you're three times bigger than me? But no matter what you do, it's not gonna stop me. I'll be back tomorrow. And then next day, and the day after that, and you'll have to beat me up every day, because I'm not afraid of you. Or you could just stay here and play with us. There's plenty of room for everybody. You know what I think? I think I'm going to enjoy beating the living daylights out of you every day. Then you'll have to beat me up, too. And me. And me. And me, too! Ah, this is lame. I don't even like this lousy old playground. I'm going home to play video games. Am I soup yet? Open your eyes. We won! Yay! We won! We can play again! You think he'll ever come back? Well, if he does, I hope it's because he wants to be friends. You were really brave, Junior. Well, sometimes a guy's gotta do what a guy's gotta do. <laughs> From the trees with the greatest of ease I'm dashing and double dare For he's Robin Hood He does what is good Stay true to the straight and the narrow Never I fear when bullies come near Threatening to flash me I stand for what's right I know not to fight But your courage and bravery hurry show where Lady comes out and sings a silly song. Got the munchies on that fateful night around 8 o'clock. So I phoned in a pizza for delivery. But I had a feeling that something wasn't right because I waited for hours and no pizza. I set the table with a paper plane. How would I know that it's taken so long, where could it be? Had a 30 minute guarantee. Pizza Angel. 
expectation, but it was the saddest sight I ever saw. I could still smell the sweet aroma of deep dish goodness, but the box was empty. Your house number was broken, so I couldn't find you. I was getting kind of hungry, so I ate, ate your pizza. So, sorry about that. You don't need to tip me or anything. Get you, Pizza Angel. Minnesota Cute calling Martin. Come in, Martin. I can't see anything. Are there any landmarks around here? Uh, nothing, Minnesota. The satellite imagery is pretty fuzzy. I'm getting a glare. Uh, use your cap to shield the screen. Martin, it's not a cap. It's called a fedora. You just keep a sharp eye out. And this is an important find for the Children's Museum. Uh, Martin? Yeah? Is there anyone else up here? Uh, no. Uh, that mountain is totally uninhabited. Uh, hey, Minnesota, I think I found something. Look over by the rock to your left. Uh, you see anything? I'm on it. nose of the indomitable snowman of the north. Be a little unstable. I 
had it, Martin. The golden nose of the indomitable snowman of the north was in my hands. It's okay, Minnesota. You did your best. Then he was there. Forget about Professor Rattan. Our children's museum will be fine. We'll get some stuff for the display soon. He's taken away all my greatest finds ever since the second grade. Remember when he took Salvador's dolly? That hurt. And just to sell it on the internet. Rattan's just a big bully, Minnesota. You have to ignore his type and go on with your life. It all started when he switched the gummy worms in my lunch with him. I know, real worms. But I didn't find out till after I ate them. Ugh. As long as that, that bully is out there, I'm not searching for anything again. I'm staying right here. Mr. Cucumber. Yeah? I'm with the New York Parks and Recreation Department, and I have an emergency with which only you can help. Talk to the tomato. I don't go out anymore. I just give him some space. Oh, well, what seems to be the trouble? We at the NYP and RD believe that a rogue Canadian group of barrel makers have launched an attempt to take both sides of Niagara Falls. Both sides? But they have the best side already. Uh, I thought you were sulking. Dastardly, isn't it? Well, how can they do this? Oh, they can't yet. They aren't strong enough. But their leader is looking for an item that will empower them beyond belief. I thought other Canadians liked us. What are these barrel makers looking for? They are searching for none other than the legendary hairbrush of Samson. You're kidding. The Samson? What? Who's Samson? Who's Samson? Samson was none other than the strong man in the Bible. God used him to fight against the Philistines who were bullying the Israelites. A strong man that fought bullies, huh? Didn't you ever go to Sunday school? Well, what's the deal with the hairbrush? Well, the story goes that Samson's amazing strength came from his long hair. Well, kinda. It was really... And when Samson's hair was cut, he lost his strength. This hairbrush is believed to be the very same that was used during the infamous shearing. So these rogue Canadians believe that whoever has possession of the brush will also gain Samson's amazing power. But if I find the brush first, I'll have the power. Then I can stop Rattan from bullying everybody. Be careful, Minnesota. This isn't a chance to try to get even with Rattan, you know. It's more important than that. It would be a lovely addition for your children's museum. You are our last hope, Mr. Cuke. I may have blown the nose caper, but this time I'll have the goods on Professor Rattan. I'll go. But Minnesota, where are you going to start? There's only one person who would know about a brush this important. But Min, she isn't an archaeologist anymore. She gave it up when Martin, you... I'm going out for ice cream. <laughs> Soda Cuke. I always knew that someday you'd come walking through my door. It's been a long time. Look, I need a couple things from you, Julia. First, a chocolate Malta. Malt. Right, chocolate. No, it's malt, not Malta. What? Malt is a dessert, Malta is an island. But with an Italian accent, they're both the same. I'm looking for clues, Jules. You're not the clueless type. I'm on the trail of a hairbrush. Same song, second verse. It's a special brush. Belong to a fella... Belong to a fella goes by the name of Samson. You heard of it? I've heard there are a lot of guys after this brush. It's too dangerous, Cuke. Stay out of it. And let those Canadians take over? No way. Somebody's gotta stand up for the little guy. You're asking for trouble, Cuke. All right. Try this address, 206 Via de Cortes de Pelo. There's some fellas there who might help. I knew I can count on you. Yo, Cuke. You forgot your malt. I didn't order it for me. You need something to go, Cuke? Oh, ah, what'll it be, sir? I'll have what your friend was having. The address, please. I'll never tell you. Oh, I think you will. Okay, Martin. I got an address. 206 Via de Cortes de Pelo. I'm on it. 
and I have more information about Samson for you. Spill it. Well, uh, God wanted Samson to be extra special, so Samson had to make certain promises to God. Promises? Uh, yeah, he couldn't touch dead things, eat grapes, or cut his hair. That's weird. But Samson didn't always keep his promises very well. Uh, you see, one day... Okay, Martin, could you hurry this up? I need you to find that address for me. But, uh, Minnesota, uh, there must be a mistake. I, I can't find that address anywhere in Malta. Hmm, I must have got it wrong. I'll go back and check. But I didn't tell him anything. The Canadians! We gotta find that address! Is it nearby? Cuke, we're going to Seville. Hey, Figaro! Can I find my best razor? You been using my razor again? Why I wanna use your razor, Leo? My razor suits me just to fine. I'm just a saying, I can't find my razor, and you the only other one here. So you're positive that guy was Canadian? I can't be sure. He didn't look Canadian. Hey, buongiorno, mi amici. Have a seat right here. So sorry, signora. We only do the man's hair. Leo. Hey, Figaro. Look who's back. Hey, Leo, what do you know? Mia piccola farfalla. How you been, Julia? You been eating well. You look thin. What's the matter, you? She looks great. Que bella, no? Of course, she looks so wonderful, you meatball. I only mean she's look, a... Look, look, fellas. We came here to ask you about something. No problemo, bambina. What do you want to know? Eh, hey, Pazan, I believe she's talking to me. I never said Maybe she Maybe this was a bad idea. You. Are you I sure these are the guys I need to talk to? Master of course. Go ahead. Ask. Ever, no? Gentlemen, I need to know about a hairbrush. Samson's <gasps> hairbrush. He's okay. But, fellas, I don't need a... Remove his cap. It's not a cap. It's a fedora. You just sit down and listen to Figaro and Leo. La Spazola di Samson, the hairbrush of a Samson. She's not a drink to be trifled with, you know? Maybe your girlfriend forget to tell you. Figaro and I are la fratalanza della Spazola, the brotherhood of the hairbrush. For centuries, our papas and our papas, papas, have protected the secret of the whereabouts of the brush. We cannot let it fall into the wrong hands, capiche? Yeah, I capiche. Why you want La Spazola di Samson? I need to find the hairbrush before the Canadians do. They plan to use its power to take over both sides of Niagara Falls. Mamma mia, no! Well, don't you worry, my friend. The hairbrush is somewhere safe where nobody but nobody will ever, ever find her. Where? Down, 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 underneath the city. There are secret catacombs. Catacombs? I'm not looking for a comb. It's a bro. No, not catacombs. Catacombs! And down in these ancient catacombs, there is a secret chamber. And in the secret chamber lies the one and only Spazola di Samson. See, Samson's a hairbrush. She lies safe. But what if somebody finds the catacombs? Nobody can find the catacombs, silly mozzarella. Not without this of that. You can see him. Nobody follows me, understand? Especially you, Minnesota fluke. Once again, you lose, worm eater. <laughs> Let me out of the chair! Hey, Figaro! 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 Mamma mia! He's gonna get the hairbrush first. I gotta call Martin. Martin! Martin! I'm here, Cuke. What's wrong? Uh, did you get a haircut? Never mind that. Where's the park guy? Huh? He was here a second ago. I guess he slipped out. Uh, tell me what's going on. Good, he wouldn't want to hear this anyway. It's bad news, Martin. Would you just tell me already? He was here, Martin. And he's after the brush. Who? Professor Rattan. Okay, now don't panic, Minnesota. Remember, he's a bully. We can deal with him. Just a bully? He's more than that. He's my enemy. Calm down. The Bible says we should love our enemies. Love? 
Love our enemies? Everybody can't go around all the time trying to get even. That would leave the whole world in a mess. Let's just figure out what to do next. I'll tell you what we're gonna do, Martin. I'm gonna get that brush first, and I'm gonna use its power to defeat all the bullies in the world. I'm gonna teach them a lesson they'll never forget. But Minnesota... See you in the funny papers, no. Martin. Where are those catacombs? I'm a glad that you ask. We have a shortcut. Let's go. Too dangerous, Jules. I gotta go alone. Be careful, Kink. It's the story of Samson. I'm on the right trail. What a guy. What's this all about? Samson lost his strength after a haircut? Poor fella. Minnesota, who told me the address of the barber shop, and you, who led us straight to the brush. It's a simple trade, Minnesota. The brush for the girl. Don't do it, Cuke. Trade. care about the hairbrush anymore. Now you only want to get even. I don't like that in you, Cuke. You're... you're nothing but a bully. Julia, I'm sorry, I... You're right, Julia. Being mean back to a bully just makes me a bully too. But it's too late now. I can't do anything. That you, Martin? Cuke! Cuke! I've been trying to get a hold of you! You'll never guess! The park guy isn't from New York. He's really working for Professor Rattan, who's been following me this whole time. And I don't think there really is a rogue band of Canadian barrel makers. They made that whole thing up to trick me! Now Rattan can rule the world, because he's got all the power! Wow! Yeah! I mean, no! 
Uh, Cuke, and that's what I've been trying to tell you. The brush doesn't have any power. But the Bible said that Samson's hair was his... The Bible said that God gave Samson his power, not his hair or his hairbrush. But what about the haircut that made him lose his strength? That wasn't about his hair, Min. Samson lost his strength because he didn't keep his promise to God. And the best part is that God gives us strength, too. What? Yep. He gives us an even greater power than Samson's. The power to love our enemies and even be kind to them. This isn't gonna be easy, but I know what I gotta do. Ready? You bet. You think he's crazy enough to try something? You betcha. Canadians! No, 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 my friend. They're the good guys. We call it a cavalry. Yeah! Nobody comes to the rescue better than the Royal Canadian Mounties, eh? Get him! Ha! There's nothing you can do against the power of Samson's hairbrush! But it has no power. You know nothing! Of course it has power! Watch! <laughs> doesn't work. What's wrong? Check the batteries, perhaps? It doesn't have any power. Never has. <laughs> Just you wait. I'll be back. Wait. Why are you taking him away? Well, because he, uh... He stole a hairbrush. Uh, yeah, he stole a hairbrush, eh? No, he didn't. I traded him for it. You mean... Yep, you can let him go. Now's our chance. Let's go. No, wait. This doesn't make sense. No one has ever been kind to me. Why did you do that? Because God gives us the power to love everybody, even our enemies. Here, you drop this. I don't think I want it after all. Sure you do. Look, you can use it to cover up that little bald spot you're getting. Ooh, nice. Hey, I'm sorry for everything I've done. I think I'm gonna like being friends. What an adventure! And Professor Rattan let you keep the hairbrush after all! Well, he didn't need it since he gave up that whole world domination thing. I'm just glad it all worked out. You know, Cuke, I never got to tell you. What's that, Jules? I'm real proud of the way you handled that bully. Aw, oh, Julia. Moose Lake Children's Museum. Yes? What? It is? Sounds dangerous. Well, let me ask him. Hey, Cuke! Think you can find Noah's umbrella? Where's my cap? It's called a fedora. I'm on my way! Wow! That sure was fun! Yeah, and exciting! I hope you liked it too, Caleb. Uh, <clears throat> oh, and Eli. You know, I think he prefers to be called Elijah. Well, how do you know? Highly probable. <sighs> Well, we're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. Why don't you like that song, Bob? I you see we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. I do like it. It's just that... Not now, Bob. It's time to talk about the lesson. <sighs> Today we learned that there are bullies everywhere, and sometimes you can't do anything to change them. And no matter what, God doesn't want us to try to get even. That just makes us bullies, too. But God does want us to love them. And like Junior learned, it's a good idea to talk to your mom or dad. That's right. Well, let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us today. <laughs> but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 5.44 Wow, that doesn't sound easy. No, it isn't. But just like in the story, God has given us the power to do good to those who aren't good to us. Which just goes to show you... God made you special. And he loves you very much. Well, it's time to go now. See you next time. Goodbye! Goodbye. And now it's time for Ukulele Karaoke with Bob. The part of the show where Bob comes out and sings an ukulele karaoke. Uh, what's going on? You are doing the ukulele karaoke, no? No, I'm on a break. Uh, this is the pirates. They are busy with the rest of the show. But I, I, I don't even know the song. Your lyrics, monsieur. Bring in the props. Uh, but wait, I... 
Let it breathe, monsieur! Hold on a sec. I'm totally unprepared to do a solo. Your backup singers. What? Isn't that the... Oui. They are the Wiggly Turtle Tubies. The Wiggly Turtle Tubies? They look taller on TV. So do you, Tomato! Uh, but really, this is Larry's gig. I can't just... This show must go on, monsieur. Quick, that is your cue. Just follow along, you will be fine. But... Let's that turtle, hello Holland. Let's that turtle, dance, dance, dance. Let's that turtle, hello Holland. Let's that turtle, dance, dance, dance. Well, I keep a little turtle at my uncle and my aunt's. My Annie's name is Myrtle, and my island turtle's name is Lance. He doesn't wander far, even if he has a chance. He just plays his ukulele, and he does the hula dance. What? Lance that turtle, hello, Lance. Lance that turtle, dance, dance, dance. Lance that turtle, hello, Lance. Lance that turtle, dance, dance, dance. He threw a luau barbecue one breezy summer night. Invited all his turtle pals to come and have a weeky bite. The turtle started walking there as Lance began to swing. The one that lived across the street arrived there in the spring. Oh, I get it. Turtles are slow. <laughs> so I took him a long time. <laughs> That's pretty good. Lance turtle. Aloha, Lance. Lance turtle. But Lance just kept on cooking. He was grilling full of glee. He was marinating ribs because he likes uh, syrup with his feta cheese. Uh, I'm sorry, I. Lance's purple turtle shell has ketchup, if you please. Pineapples are shiny, spotted tiki bumblebees. Oh man. Lance and turtle. Aloha, Lance. Lance and turtle. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hey, guys, I don't think this is right. It doesn't make any sense. It works for us. <laughs> but this song, this song. Uh, there are luscious chocolate fingers spinning slowly in the school. Malay Kalikimaka. Fluffy bunnies driving in the pool. <laughs> Larry. A thousand igloos wax the beach, spray luggage in the tree, raining puppies, flying clown, flossing Puna Hale. Ow! Oh, forget it. Woohoo! La Pagas Weezy's coconut, tahini yo yo leg, white mini whiskey jetty floss, the meg's a fuzzy parrot bag, paper plastic porcupine, the horsey makes his bed, the huma huma nuku nuku abo awas in bed. Lance and Turtle, hello, Holland. This has been Ukulele Karaoke with Bob. Tune in next time when Bob says, I'll be in my dressing room. Dance, dance, dance. And now it's time for silly. Hold it. And now it's time for silly songs with Scottish Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly Scottish song. I can't tell you how proud I am at this moment. I dance on stilts. While he knits quilts. Nice quilt! I sing with simulated Scottish Highland lilts. Oh, beautiful! He plays his bagpipes. He tags melts. Tigers! We feel so smart in our red tartan Scottish kilts. Sing it loud! In our red tartan kilts. We feel so smart in our red tartan Scottish kilts. Technically, you stitch a quilt, but otherwise, lovely. Happy the morning to you! I'll have you know that's not in Scotland. I dance on stilts. Excuse me, sir. His stitch is quilt. What you doing with a camera? I sing with simulated Northern Irish lilt. Irish? He plays his whistle. What? He salt, it smelts. It's not on the menu. We feel so smart in our green tartan Irish kilt. I got nothing against me, Irish. Green tartan kilt. We feel so smart in our green tartan Irish kilt. But this is a sky song. Tip, tip, tiria. Dance on stilts. He stitches quilts. What are you doing? I sing with simulated English cockney lilt. He plays his trumpet. Cockney trumpet melts. Give me that trumpet. We feel so smart in our St. George's English kilts. Well, you shouldn't let me pass. Our St. George's kilts. We feel so smart in our St. George's English kilts. He stitches quilts. American! I sing with ordinary, oh, unaccented oh, lilts. I'm feeling dizzy. He plays his banjo. Each chatter melts. I'm breaking we all the We feel so smart in our Star Spangled Striping Kilts. Stop! In our Star Spangled Kilts. We 
We feel so smart in our star spangled striped kilts. We feel so smart in our star spangled striped kilts. This has been Silly Songs with Scottish Larry. Tune in next time to hear Larry say. Just get him some scotch tape and butterscotch. He'll be fine. Ah, oh, my bunny lies over the ocean. Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato, and welcome to Veggie Tales. Uh, Larry said he'd be right back. Said he had some kind of a surprise or something. Whoa! Uh, Larry? Oh, what are you? Whoa! Oh, look out for the sink! Where did you get? Do you like it? I saved up 500 box tops from Frosted Flaky Flipper cereal, and it's finally here. My new ukulele. Uh, that's a unicycle, Larry. Uh, but aren't those things really hard to ride? Well, I guess at first, but I got the hang of it. No big deal. I think I'm gifted. You can't even reach the pedals. How are you doing that? I'm telling you, Bob, I got a gift. And you know what I'm going to do with it? Uh, your gift? Yeah. Rich and famous, Bob. Give me a month, and my ukulele and I will be on the cover of Veggie Beat magazine. It's a unicycle. And are you sure that's what your gift is for? Well, what else would it be for? You know, that reminds me of a letter we just got from Dylan Clark of Altoona, Wisconsin. Can Dylan ride a unicycle? Well, no. But Dylan can build things better than anyone else he knows. His mom says he has a gift. Dylan wants to know what exactly a gift is, and what is he supposed to do with it? Rich and famous, Dylan! Wait a minute, Larry. We have a story today that can help both of you. It's about a boy who received an extraordinary gift and had to figure out what it was for. It's full of elves and dwarves and flobbits. Ooh! What's a flobbit? You'll find out in a minute. Dylan, get ready for the Lord of the Beans. Baggy pants? I am never late. I arrive precisely when I intend to. his speech. Here he is now. Dear Flobbits, today is my 22th birthday. Oh, 122 years is too short a time to live among such fine folk. I'm twice as tall as half of you and half as short as twice of you. But I'm growing tired, you see. I'm feeling stretched like chocolate pudding scraped across too much ham. My life has been a series of adventures, a string of journeys, quests, and curious trips. I've done all right, you see, 
gathering riches just for me, all to bring the cup of joy up to my lips. I grabbed a little more of this and a little more of that. I wanted to be happy, but instead it left me flat. Share with me the secret if you can. The key to be a truly happy man. I didn't mean to interrupt your feasting or bore you with my silly little speech. So dig right in, my friends, before the celebration ends and the plate of pleasure passes out of reach. And have a little more of this and a little more of that. Hope it makes you happy, but it only makes you fat. And now it's time to bid you all adieu. But not before a present. Just for you! My birthday cake! <laughs> Uncle Bellboy? <laughs> You old rascal. They never saw that one coming. <laughs> you think you're awfully <gasps> clever, oh, don't you? Randolph, my old friend. Why, you haven't changed a bit. No, but you have. You must be twice as tall as when last we met. <laughs> Well, you know, clean living. <laughs> and your clothes, very fine for a flobbit. Oh, uh, rags, really? And this house! Uh, I don't remember that then. Uh, what? Uh, Randolph? Or that. Or that. Well, business has been good. And what's this? An espresso maker? Oh, you really must try it. I tell you, it makes tea taste like bath water. I wasn't sure I'd like it at first. It has quite a... Oh, kick. Billboy baggy pants, there are many powerful beans in the world. None of them should be used lightly. Oh, being friends with you can be such a bother. All right, here it is. I found it on my adventures. It's given me everything I've asked for. Everything I could think of, anyway. But something's missing. I can't put words to it, but I intend to find it, whatever it is. That's why I'm leaving. I'm leaving tonight, and I don't believe I'll be coming back. And your home? To Toto, my nephew. I'm giving everything to him. What about the bean? Yes, the bean, too. What I'm looking for, I don't think it can give me. You'll see to it that he gets it, won't you? Yes, of course. Well, I must be off. Farewell, Randolph. Hmm? Oh, yes. Farewell, Bill Boy. Until we meet again. He had to leave. He said he was looking for something. He talked about leaving. I guess I knew someday he really would. He's given you everything. His home, all his things. This bean. Why would I want a bean? This bean is not an ordinary bean. This bean is not an ordinary bean. It's not? 
not? No, it's not. Many, many years ago, when Center Earth was thick with snow, four beans were given. I said four beans were given. Long before the shire was made, where flowers flaunter in the shade, four beans were given. Powerful beans were given. Special. Powerful. The first bean could grow any kind of food or drink you could imagine. The second could change your looks, your height, your hair. The third produced the finest clothing. And the fourth, small kitchen appliances. Small kitchen appliances? Small kitchen appliances, toasters, blenders, fried daddy deep fryers, you name it. Whoa. Is this one of those beans? No. No? Oh. Where'd those beans go? Unfortunately, the poor fools who received them had no idea what they'd been given and cooked them up in a stew. Not bad. But there was another bean. Another bean? Another bean. Another bean. A fifth bean. A fifth bean that would give anything. From blenders to bagels, hairdos to hats, the power of all the others wrapped up in one bean. One bean? One bean, the most powerful bean in the world. Is this it? Put it in the fire, Toto. Huh? Put it in the fire. The one true bean carries an inscription revealed by fire alone. Now take it out and look closely. See anything? No, wait. What does it say? It says, if you can read this, you're too close. Other side. Use wisely. Use wisely? This is that bean. This is that bean. It's an amazing gift, Toto, and it's yours. The bean is yours. I'm not so sure I want it. Bill Boy's given me plenty of stuff. You take the bean, Randolph. The bean is your gift, Toto. Every gift is given for a reason. We can't choose which ones we get, only what we do with them. Well, what am I supposed to do with it? I don't know, beans. What if I use it wrong and mess everything up? Randolph, you're wise. Tell me what to do with it. Well, I, uh, to be honest, I don't know. I paid better attention in fireworks class than in bean class. It was a good show, though, wasn't it? I think I know someone who can help, though. Uh, the elders of the Raspberry Forest. Their knowledge of mysterious plants and beans goes back ages. The Raspberry Forest? That's on the other side of... The mountains of much snowier. The journey will be difficult, but the wisdom you seek cannot be gained without work. There are other dangers. Your gift is not unknown. The Dark Lord Scary Man would give anything to have it for his own. Scary Man? That bean could feed and clothe his armies as they ravage Center Earth. Right now, his minions search for it. M minions? Yes, foul creatures that feel nothing. What kind of vegetable are they? Oh, they aren't vegetable at all. Unnatural creatures forged by Scary Man himself. Half spoon, half fork. Sports. They are his utensils, and they do his bidding. Sports! No one would blame you if you just put the bean in a box and forgot about it. I've been given a gift, and I want to know what it's for. I need to know what I'm to do with it. But I don't think I can make the journey alone. You won't have to. I took the liberty to invite a few friends. 
fearless ranger, Iricorn. Oops. You have my sword! Sharpshooting elf, Legoland. You have my bow. And gruff but lovable dwarf, Grumpy. Boy, could we have parked any farther away? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have my axe. Not that it'll do any good. <clears throat> oh, that's my brother. He didn't have anything to do this weekend. He's another elf. What does he do? Ah, uh, he's pretty good in the kitchen. And the other elf. These fearless men have agreed to accompany you on your quest to brave much snowier and keep you from scary man's clutches as you seek the purpose of your gift. I give you the Fellowship of the Bee. Got any waffles? to go before we left. I didn't have to then. I'm good now. I can hike forever. Much snowy. That's a lot of snow. Well, we covered a lot of ground today. Let's say we bunk down here for the night. It's not even lunchtime. And? It'll be fun, he says. Fresh air, he says. You'll get out of the mines, he says. <laughs> and for this, I'm missing taco night. That, that was it. Now I can go for hours. there yet. You all wait here while I look for a safe route down. If you're clever, these things can even keep your nose warm. <laughs> How's your nose feel now? Feel warm. I'm starving. Where are all the raspberries? Not that kind of raspberry. Not that kind of raspberry? Well, what's that supposed to mean? Hey, kid, you got any food? My stomach's growling. Just stay old biscuits. Did you eat all yours? I got them right here. They don't agree with me. I was thinking more like a, uh, a nice chicken burrito. Sorry, fresh out of burritos. Hey, you got that bean, right? Yeah. It can make anything, anything we want. I guess. Perfect, so make me a chicken burrito with lots of guacamole. I don't think I should. Why not? I was given this gift for a reason, and I don't want to use it till I know what that reason is. Man, if I had a gift like that, I'd be using that thing to get rich. After I made a few burritos.
Listen, we are nearing the elders who will know the secret of Toto's bean. With them, your behavior will become critically important. Try to hold it together. What do you mean, critically important? The elders of the Raspberry Forest are ancient. Somewhere around the fourth millennium, they lost their senses of humor. You may not laugh in their presence. You may not even smile, no matter what happens. The consequences, if you do, will be grave. So these elders must be as old as the trees. No, they are the trees. Hail, elders of the Raspberry Forest! May your fruit never fall in vain! Welcome, Randolph, son of Mandolf, keeper of the flame of Remorthia Olilith. Thank you for your welcome, Lord Falaminion Terraglyph, son of Therabil and Lithimon. That is a beautiful jewel you wear. Yes, a gift from a friend. I have an eye for beautiful things. But tell me, Randolph, son of Mandolf, did you come here to admire my jewelry? No, Lord Falaminion Terraglyph, son of Therabil Elithamon. It is the matter of a bean that brings us here. A bean that I believe may be the bean. You mean Randolph, son of Mandolf, the bean of power? Yes, Lord Falaminion Terraglyph, son of Therabil Elithamon. It has fallen into the possession of a young flobbit who seeks your wisdom in knowing for what purpose it should be used. He should take the bean through the blue gate to the land of woe, Randolph, son of Mandolf. There he will find his answer. <laughs> Knock it off. They're just saying hello. Uh, but, but the land of woe is a cursed place filled with evil. What would he do when he gets there? Uh, I believe we must be going. Thank you for your sage advice. Get out, get out, get out. I said no matter what happens, don't laugh or smile. Didn't I say that? Well, you didn't mention they were going to talk like that. So, uh, how long will they keep us here? The last fellow I knew who made fun of their language was up here for 12 years. Then they let him go? No, he was blown off in a windstorm. Never seen again. To have a gift is a wonderful thing. Your spirits will lift and your heart Though some might use it to live like a king First I want to know what it's for Will I ever know what it's for? There's gotta be some way to get down from here None that I know of You know, maybe we could build a wing shot You gotta be kidding me We can make a hot air balloon out of our hat The eagle! <gasps> the eagle's coming! Everyone, stand on the edge of the platform next to me! Now, when I give the signal, we're all gonna jump together! Trust me, this'll work! Okay, ready? Jump! Service drinks and little bags of peanuts. Get your own ride. 
I thought that would work. At least we didn't wake the trees. Randolph, son of Mandolf, you have left your detention. Oh, 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 why, yes, Lord Therabin, run, Terriglyph, son of Therabin, run, Lilililililith, run! Ah! Run! Of course, no! to the land of woe. The Blue Gate. Why do they call it blue, you ask? Perhaps for the sorrow that blankets the land beyond. Perhaps for the sadness of those who toiled on this cursed wall. Perhaps for the river of tears that flowed <laughs> from the... Or that. has no handle. How are we gonna get in? Look for a doorbell. There's some kind of writing over the gate. I can't read it. There are few who can. It is the tongue of woe. And if I remember my seventh grade diabolical languages class, it reads, he who seeks to pass this gate, a riddle first must solve. The answer that will seal his fate must all his wits involve. What thing with awesome strength is blessed, yet quakes before the smallest pest? Stands so high, yet sniffs the ground without so much as stooping down. Has no home, or chair, or bunk, yet holds his bath inside a trunk. If your first guess ringeth true, passage we will grant to you. But if in air you guess, my friend, the door will bar. Your journey end. It said all that? It's a highly efficient tongue. You can fit a whole book on a napkin. So it's a riddle, eh? Awesome strength. Yet quakes before the smallest pest. Tall, yet sniffs the ground. A cow! An ostrich with a suitcase! Bacon! It's a long shot. We have one chance to get this right. A vicuna. Three ring binder. A vespa. An elephant. <gasps> An elephant. It's strong, but it's afraid of the littlest pest, a mouse. And even though it's tall, it can sniff the ground with its long trunk, which also holds water when it takes a bath. <laughs> elephant, man. <laughs> with bacon. All right. Only one way to find out. Is it an elephant? It's a trick. It's an optimal illusion. It only looks small because it's so far away. Watch. I could be wrong. <laughs> Maybe if you ran faster. Try it again. How are we going to get in? The only one who'd fit through that door is you, Toto. You don't need to do that, Toto. No one would blame you if you just went home and put the bean in a box. I knew this was a lousy idea, right from the start. Oh well, we tried, you know. It isn't like we didn't try. No, I want to know what my gift is for. Toto, the lands beyond this door are filled with evil. It won't be easy. I want to know. They say a creature lives therein, desperate for the bean. I want to know. Maybe you could swap it for another gift. Uh, you know, a, a gift exchange. Every gift is given for a reason. We can't choose which ones we get, only what we do with them. 
That's one brave flobbit. I got dibs on his espresso maker. Well, that's that. So we can go home now, right? We failed. The fellowship failed. We were supposed to help Toto, and now he's in there, on his own. We may yet have another chance to help him. I'm a lucky fella. I'm a lucky boy. I've got a new umbrella, and it's me pride and joy. When the rain may come and the sun may go, I'll be warm and dry from me head to toe. I'm a lucky fella. I'm a lucky boy. Oi! I've got a new umbrella! What are you doing? Ah, uh, we were just trying to get in. Oh, well, all you need to do is go down a couple of miles to the Red Gate. It's wide open. The Red Gate? I've heard of it, but I thought it was just a myth. Just came from there. You'll know it when you see an angry, murderous band of sporks headed through to find a small flubbit in a bee with instructions to bring him back dead or alive. Do you like me, Umbrella? <laughs> Gotta go. Oh, I'm a lucky fella. I'm a lucky boy. I've got a new Umbrella. And it's me pride and joy. Angry sparks! A small flabbit! Toto! We gotta beat him to that gate! Uh, I think I'll go with Umbrella Boy. Come on! Uh, and tonight was Meatloaf Night. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Elves, the part of the show where Iricorn comes out and sings a silly song for elves. In silly songs for elves. Behold, Legolam! How about thee? My bow shall sing with your puppet arm! Don't you point that thing at me! Help! trouble you turned out to be. If I had half a mind, I'd just throw you in a ditch and be done with you. Oh, 
Oh, that's gonna leave a mark. What's that? Who's there? Oh, my precious. They stole it from me. Who are you? It's mine, I tell you. It's mine. Give it to me. What is my precious? You mean the bean? It's my gift. It was given to me. I'm taking it to the land of woe to find out what it's for. <gasps> no, don't do that. That's a terrible place. Give it to me. I know what it's for. It's for me. peanut, but it was no peanut. It was the bean. Instantly, my life was changed. No more working for anything. Whatever clothes you want, bang, you got it. Any kind of food, there it is. You want a fountain of great Nia to shoot right out the ground? No problem. A life of ease right in the palm of my hand. Wow. So what happened? To me? One day, before 10 a.m., I had created and consumed a 200-pound marshmallow peep. Unfortunately, I fell into a sugar coma. When I awoke three days later, the bean was gone. And now look at me! I'm falling to pieces! My clothes are gone! Even my hair is falling out! Have you tried washing it? What? And work? Once you taste a life of ease, my friend, there's no going back. So now, why did you want to come to the land of woe? Whoa. <laughs> Don't bother waiting up for me. <sighs> the red gate. It's yellow. Hmm? Oh, they say it was named for the color of the sunset on the day they hung those doors. Don't be so literal. Randolph, the sparks. There's only five. We can take them. No problem. Grumpy? Yes, sir. All right, then. For Toto and the Bee! Good. Forget about it. It's been dry for years. 
Where do they get their water? They don't have any. I'm telling you, this place is no good! Can you help us, please? We are so please. Help us. Please. Oh, this is bad. This is not good. While we still draw breath, hope is alive. We need a plan. We'll create a distraction. Does anybody have a banjo or an inflatable turkey? Did I mention it was meatloaf night? Not that this isn't fun. Oh, finish them quickly. We've got a flobby to catch. Watch out for their pointy ends. I got you covered. Have you ever actually fired that thing? What? Sure! Plenty of times! Not a good time for arguing! Something smells good. Who wants a cookie? Oh, we ain't had nothing but maggoty bread for three stinking days! Another cookie. This is just a cookie. Nothing tastes better than a cookie baked in a tree. Help us. Can you help us? Please, my daughter is hungry. I don't think these people are evil. I think they're thirsty and hungry. Okay, maybe. But let's talk some more when we're out of here. No, that's why they sent me. They wanted me to help. I can help them. What? Not with the bean you can't. It's my life of ease. It's not for them. It's my gift, and the elders want me to use it to help. They've got their own gifts. Let them help themselves. Toto. Randolph. Bart, look out. Don't worry about them. Turns out they love cookies. I know why the elders sent me here. They want me to help. Good thought, but wrong. Scary man! The elders sent you here because I told them to. What? What? Everyone has something they're sure they can't live without. For some, it's fame or fortune. For others, a life of ease. For a certain ancient tree, it happens to be jewels, something of which I have in abundance. You bribed them? Yes. They got what they want, and I get what I want. Ha! Use your gift to help people. How quaint! I hope you've learned your lesson, boy. Life is short. If you have a gift, use it for yourself before you've lost it and it's too late. Too late! <laughs> You're wrong, scary man! What? Who said that? You're wrong, scary man! <laughs> Show yourself! Where are you? So fast, scary guy. Sporks, save me! Cookie Man say no. Oh, bother. Uncle Bellboy, you're short. Yes. Without the bean, it didn't take long. And your clothes. We're for a much taller flobbit. When you gave me the bean, you lost everything. Yes, I did. But I found so much more. Clothes and toys and fame, and they all feel good for a minute. But the happiness they bring passes in a flash, like straw in a fire. When I left, I was looking for a happiness that lasts. And I found it here, of all places. How? By helping. By using my gifts to help others, rather than myself. I hear you figured out what your gift is for. I thought I had. But the elders were lying. It was a trick. They may have been lying, but they couldn't keep you from finding the truth. So what would you like to do with your gift? I want to help people.
to talk about what we learned today. So what we... <gasps> and they took the What Have We Learned song! Huh. How could they? But Bob, you didn't even like that song. Well, yeah, but uh, after a while, it, it kind of uh, grows on you. Bob, we got to finish the show. Without the song, I don't know. Okay, let's see if Cordy has a verse for us. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2.10 So God made us and gave us our special gifts and talents so we could do good works for others. Isn't that right, Bob? Huh? Oh, right, Larry. Lots of people just use their special gifts for themselves, to make money or to get rich or famous. Helping ourselves might make us feel good for a while, but it doesn't last. Happiness that lasts is called joy, and it comes from using our gifts the way God intended, from seeing the difference we can make to the people around us. So, Dylan, maybe you'll be building houses someday for poor folks, maybe in another country. And I'll be writing my ukulele for science. Uh, well, sure. Or to entertain sick kids in a hospital. That, too. We're out of time for today. Remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Fragile, celery, gotta be. 